Okay, so we've thought about a lot of concepts so far. You might have thought, SEO, I just need to put keywords on my website. We're seeing that it's a lot to think about in SEO and SEM. So I've got a handout for you where we're going to take sort of a step zero approach. What do we need to do before we really start to work on our website? If I don't have a website yet, <clears throat> you need to think about this to make a website. If you do have a website, you can still look at this to see what did I forget to do? What did I forget to apply? Again, the printer's off at the moment, so if you'd like to print this, I'll turn it on a little later. But this is a document that you can actually fill in on the web, uh, on the computer. You don't really need to print it out. Go to the desktop again. <clears throat> Open computer. Open up your computer window up on the top left. We're going to go back to the network location, Classroom Data Drive Z, as in Zebra. I'm going to be giving you various handouts throughout the course in that folder. So open up the network location. Scroll down to our class folder, which is Campus SEO Wednesday. Open that folder. And I've added two things. The long tail keyword strategy graphic, if you want it, and the client company profile. Again, don't double click these. You want to drag these to your desktop, or if you brought a USB flash drive, <coughs> to your drive. If you didn't, you can email them to yourself. You can upload them to your Dropbox or OneDrive or whatever if you need help with that. We'll talk about it at the end of the day. But at the <coughs> moment, from the network folder, just drag the client company. And if you want the long tail, drag it to your desktop, and then we'll open the client company profile. Anyone need a little help finding that? Those files? Okay, client company profile. This is a Word document. You should be able to open it on your Windows or Mac computer, no problem. This is a variation of what my company does when we meet a new client. Because the question you might have is, if you're going to make a website for a, a company, or if you're going to do Twitter for them, how do you really know about their company? You're just someone coming in brand new to run their Twitter? How, how are you going to feel the, the heart and soul of the company to be able to tweet about it effectively, or to do great things on Instagram, or to make videos? Well, everyone, every web designer, every social media marketer has that conundrum. I'm a company that wants to do a really good job for a client. Well, I need to know as much as possible about that client for us to understand it to do a good job. So this is a variation of what my company does. We do this company profile activity with the client. We sit down with the owner or the interested parties of the owner, and we fill this out. We talk about it. We, we, we brainstorm. We understand each other. For yourself, this is something for you to understand your own company. Do you really know all of these concepts for you to proceed, to make a good website, to blog, to get on social media, to do SEO and SEM? Again, you don't have to fill this out and turn it in. You're not going to get a grade. You'll get a grade, A+, plus, whatever. So you're not going to, I'm not going to grade this and, and such, but I can look at it if you want. This is something for you to think about. You don't have to do it now, but I'm going to go through it to see what's being asked of you. You put your company name, the date, because this will probably change as you further develop this. Um, and there's these big questions to think about company name. What is the name of your company? Why did you choose that name? Does it have a special meaning or story? For example, my web design company will be vic.co, pronounced vic.co, and it comes from my name. So if, if I'm Victor's Bakery, sure, I can just write Victor's Bakery. Why do you have that name? Is it clever? Is it some sort of palindrome? Is it uh, alliterative? Is it the name of your family's business? Why do you have that name? Think about that a little bit. Because that, as you define these aspects of your company, you can then further put the best foot forward on social media, on Yelp, have your employees live and breathe your company, Nike, uh, McDonald's, all of these big companies, Louis Vuitton, they all, their employees, the best ones, live and breathe the company. They're evangelists for the company. They can talk about it and love the company and get other people to love and talk about the company. If you define all of these things about your company, 
that helps you for SEO, SEM, and also for many of these other sort of prosaic things. Um, to get a better presence online, to understand your product, your brand, why are you online? So, along those lines, a tagline. If your company, oh, well, think of one sentence that helps people understand what your company is about. Think of some famous taglines or slogans. Why do they stick? Your tagline could also be a concise statement about your company if its name is not immediately understandable. For example, Vic.co, a great company for your great website. This is all of these aspects of marketing. Anyone ever watch the show Mad Men? Mad Men is about one aspect is about ad executives in the 60s New York. What were they developing that created this culture of advertising and consumerism in the 60s when they thought of the ads that made smoking cool, that made, you know, a lifestyle attainable? All of that, all those concepts of marketing are obviously very complex and out of the scope of this class, but I'm touching on these concepts. Marketing. How are you marketing yourself? How are you presenting yourself to future clients, potential clients, current clients? PMD Interactive on its own doesn't tell you what the company does. Do they make websites? Do they make video games? What do they, what, how, are they, how do they interact? What, is, what does that even mean? Well, then the tagline of that, web designers in San Diego. Okay, that explains it very literally. Think about some of these other slogans and taglines. I'm loving it. What company is that? McDonald's. McDonald's. Just do it. What company is that? Nike. There's a lot of companies with a lot of slogans, taglines that stick, and they change. Where's the beef? Which one's that? Wendy's. They don't use it anymore, but it's stuck 30 years later. So your tagline can be literal, or it can be a little bit more artistic, prosaic. That obviously takes effort to figure out these companies spend millions of dollars to design these marketing strategies. You probably don't have that, um, that much. Spend a little time, think about it, talk with your friends and family or interested parties. Be careful though, if, everyone has, if, if you give everyone the opportunity for an opinion, everyone has an opinion. And then you can't decide on an answer. So the main interested decision makers should be the ones that make these decisions. The reason also for this for some of these things like a tagline is you've got to fill out a Twitter profile, you've got to <coughs> fill out a LinkedIn profile, you've got to fill in your Kudzu profile. That stuff can come from these things and that it's consistent so that you're not inventing a brand new bio for all of your profiles. You have this master document that explains it or that consolidates it. There's a little part about here about thinking of the About Us content. Because a good website should have an about us screen because the spammers don't the spammers have buy this now sign up now but nothing about who's behind the company why do they believe in their product how to contact them an about us page write a paragraph about your company who founded it what is it about when did you get the idea for it where was it founded why are you in the business how will you make the company a success these answers will help fill your bio on various sites or your website. You notice these are the classic who, what, when, where, why, how. You don't have to answer them all, of course. The more of them that you do, the better you understand your company to be able to market it. And again, we do this for a client because we need to understand a company to do a good job for it. Let me take a segue right here, a big segue on the about us. This other concept that you would really get into much more detail about in a marketing class. Marketing is a college major. You can get degrees in this stuff. And I only have a little bit of time to talk about it, but I can guide you. I'm going to draw something here. I'm going to draw a big circle, oval, and then a smaller circle inside of it, and then the smallest circle inside of that. The outer circle 
the yellow circle here. Think of the word what. The inner circle how. And the smallest circle why. There's circles within circles, that means they all relate. And there's this question. This concept here, these are the golden circles. This is a concept from an author and a speaker named Simon Sinek. He's got a bunch of books and lectures and such. His main book is called Start With Why. The concept here is this can be applied to just about anything. Companies, leaders, products, people, organizations. Let's think about it in terms of a company. My company, Vic.co. The what of the company is that we are web designers. Vic.co is a web design company. That's what we do. Web designers. You and a billion others, according to Bing. Okay. How are we web designers? We use WordPress. And we use PHP and we use these technologies and we'll make a great website that is an e-commerce site with the experience that we have. How? Great. You and a million others. Okay? We decreased a little bit more, but still a lot of people. How are you accomplishing that? Web design? A lot of people still know how to do that. The smallest circle, this is the hardest question to answer. Why are you a web designer? Why do you do this? It's perfectly fine to say, for the money. It's also good to say, for the love of it. You know, these are artistic answers. But the why could be, we are web designers founded in San Diego. We grew up in San Diego. We went to college in San Diego. We're educated. We live here. We love San Diego. We live and breathe San Diego. We know to not get on the 5 at 5 o'clock, 4 o'clock, because you're not going to get home. We therefore are going to try to attract clients that fit that why as well. Why do they have a business in San Diego? Why do they do what they do? The more that our why aligns with their why, the more possibility that we can get hired, that we can make a website for them, that we can have a partnership, a business. The why, let's think about it in terms of uh, art artistry. The what. I am a watercolor painter. How? Well, I have this technique that I learned, you know, I'm, I, I educated myself and I went to college and I, I know these great techniques of watercolor. I can make amazing portraits. Yeah, you and everyone else. Well, why would I potentially get hired to do watercolors for a particular family? Maybe I'm doing a, a watercolor family portrait because I've made a connection with them in that they also, you know, believe in art like I do. They contribute to uh, to the museum. They uh, are patron of the arts. Uh, I grew up uh, in an impoverished household, but we always made time to go to a museum. You know, what is this why that my company resonates with a potential client or customer? It's the hardest one to answer, because if you don't know your own why, you don't know how that can apply to your customer. And so, I'm going to add that graphic to the network folder a little bit later, and again, this is a big digression for a big concept that we don't have a lot of time to talk about, but if you look up start, well, we can look at it a different way, Simon Sinek. If you search Simon Sinek, there should be his lecture, 18 minutes, about these concepts and his books and his sites and all of that. It's the golden circle. Start with why. A simple but powerful model for inspirational leadership. <coughs> and it's, uh, so I bring up that huge topic to think about because these are things to incorporate 
into this document that I gave you. And again, you're not getting a grade for this, but that doesn't matter. This is for you to define your company so that you can fully optimize it better. And once my once my website starts appearing on page one, I start getting more clients. I start getting more donations to my nonprofit <laughs> organization. I start to do whatever I'm trying to do online. But why are you online? Why do you do it? Because everyone can do the what and the how, but the why is very unique. So that goes back to answering that about us. Related as well to the mission statement. Write something that lets potential customers <coughs> know what's in it for them. Why would they hire you? For example, Vic.co exists to bring the most beautiful web design to the most discerning clients in Southern California. Our designs will make everyone take notice. The mission statement could simply be Vic.co makes websites. Great. So does everyone else. But here, we're taking a page out of the great marketers of our time. You know, usually tech companies like Apple, Google, Microsoft, Samsung. All of these companies that they create a product, but they then they create a want for the product. Not a need, but a want. And so your mission statement can be a literal kind of statement, or a little bit more artistic one perhaps with these sort of buzzwords and keywords that help answer the why and resonate with a potential customer. So love them or hate them, Apple is one of the most profitable companies in humanity. They uh, earn billions of dollars year after year after year. In the last past year, just like every other stock, kind of not as much as before. 2015 was apparently a bad year economically, stock-wise and such. But they still managed to make only $20 billion instead of $30 billion, let's say. So Samsung as well, they're the biggest company with cell phones and washing machines and everything that they do. And Microsoft, Windows 10 now is on 200 million computers worldwide in like six months, the fastest ever. So all of these companies create a product and they create a want, not a need, because I don't need a computer, I don't need a cell phone, I want one. But all of these companies create that because of strong marketing. That's why marketing, SEM, is valuable, goes hand in hand with SEO. We'll do other activities about thinking about these things a little bit more, but mission statement. You can go to just about every website, poke around in there, any company website, and find some sort of mission statement to get ideas. I'm going to go to the college's website, because right at the footer, at the very bottom, right there, mission statement to provide ongoing learning opportunities, preparing diverse individuals for career advancement, a college education, or enriched lives through good health and personal fulfillment. That's the mission. Very basically, we could have said, to give free classes. <laughs> OK. But here, this might be a little bit better, because we talk about the diversity that we believe in, career adva invest advancement that many people need, in education that is important in having healthy lives. You can go in further to read more and it goes into more detail. That was the condensed version. Vision statement, philosophy, core values, mission, long mission, etc. Yes? So, um, is there like a limit as far as how much content to, to put like for your mission statement? Not really. Look at this here. It's tucked away on this page that a lot of people are not going to visit. Right. They put in the little blurb of their mission on the home page, but then they put the one that's three times longer on this page. And people might not go browse it directly that often, but the search engines are looking at every screen on your website. Right. So if the search engine finds that you teach basic skills courses, gotcha. if someone is searching for basic skills in office, it's listed right here. I might appear on Bing or Google or Yahoo. There is, of course, over content and all of that, but I wouldn't quite worry about that as we talk more about other things. So, mission statement, values, 
what's what are some keywords your company believes in for example orderliness teamwork etc you can just find a list there the reason for this is that as we get into social media there's a vast amount of people that could be potential customers that believe in you know the environment family um, um, affordability just like my company so I'm gonna be searching to find those potential customers and reach out to them on social media on Twitter Facebook Instagram etc and if I project these values that's helping answer that why helping get those potential customers to hire me to buy my product because my product is about something that they care about that the values align so just some keywords here that can be used literally or figuratively on the s on the website or the social media and such further going along that route personality what kind of company uh, think of your person, think of your company as a person. How would he or she communicate? How would he or she behave? For example, Vic.co's communication is spontaneous and friendly. Vic.co is happy to talk to new clients and share the latest in web design. So thinking our, our, our company as a person, this is another larger activity in the realms of marketing about creating, and another activity later we'll talk about personas, potential clients. But here we're trying to define again the why. Why is our web design company better than that other web design company down the street? And what kind of people are we trying to attract or work with? Because our personality is evident in how we tweet. Would you want your, <clears throat> your tax preparer on their Facebook account to always be cracking jokes? Maybe not, because I want them to manage my money um, professionally. And if they're always sharing these funny cat pictures, it makes me think, how is the back office running, and is my, 10, is my uh, 1040 form going to be filled out properly? So the opposite, though. What if I'm a daycare, and we're sharing those photos of those cat pictures and fun stuff and jokes and all of that great stuff? Then it makes me feel, great, it's a fun place for my kids to get be in daycare, and, and great. Oppositely, what if that CPA is pretty stoic and serious and sincere on Twitter? I don't want a stoic, sincere daycare, daycare center. I want a fun, personable daycare center for the kids. So the personality of your content, specifically social media, is important to think about. And lastly, the fundamentals of the company, just what you write down here the address of the company, your website, contact info, because this is stuff you'll probably also add on your website. The spammers don't have a contact phone number. They don't have an address. They don't have a, a way to, to, uh, to get in contact. You, as a legitimate owner, business, will. If you're a home business, if you're doing this out of your garage, great. Don't put your home address, because what you can do is get a P.O. box. Yes, a P.O. box is not free. You can get a P.O. box to have a real address to get correspondence. Sometimes, yes? I just have a quick question because this is exactly what I struggle with. Um, okay, should I put, if I just use my regular phone, um, should that be on my website? Because will some spammers or spiders pick that up? Let me answer that just, just one moment. Very good question. Uh, about putting your real information. One way to obfuscate your address, home address, is to put a P.O. box. Sometimes people look at a P.O. box and don't quite trust that either because anyone can buy a P.O. box for like, I don't know, $40 a year. Well, my local post office, I don't know if all of them do this now, but my local post office lets you use the actual address of the post office and then you just attach the P.O. box number. So instead of being P.O. box 12598 San Diego, I can actually have, you know, uh, 830 Sands Drive number 2140, whatever. San Diego, California. It looks like a little bit more of a real address. I know my post office does it. I don't know if they all do it yet. Yes. I just asked mine and they gave me the real address. Cool. And then for phone numbers, I have a Google Voice phone number. Yeah, that's what I do too. That's, that's what I was about to say. That's what I was about to say. Yes. Uh, so 
company address could be a PO box. Your contact info as in phone number. Google gives you a free phone number. You can get a free phone number from Google. It's called Google Voice. You can look at it on your own, but you can look up Google Voice. The catch with Google Voice is that it is still attached to some phone number, to some phone. I have my real phone number here that I hardly give to anyone, but I give everyone my Google Voice number. It's a different number that I've picked. I even I think I even picked it with like a cool word acronym. You know how you can do that? 1-800-CALL-NOW or whatever? I forgot what it is. But I got one of those and I give that Google Voice number because with Google Voice you can set it up that they call that number and it rings on my phone here and my home phone and my office phone. All of them ring at once and I can answer the one where I'm at. I can set it up for voicemail so that it doesn't ring any of my phones but it gives me an alert that someone left you a voicemail. I can say, thank you for calling Victor Campos, we'll get back to you in 10 minutes, whatever. And it goes directly to a free voice mailbox, and that's one way then, instead of using my real phone number, I put in Google Voice, I can then mark it in Google spam, and I never hear from them again, and I'm not giving my real phone. And it can email you or text you. Through. It's very powerful. Texts, emails, alerts to tell you what's going on. Does it give you a local, like, it gives you a local area code. You can cho you can choose the local area codes. Yes. Now it's been around a few years, probably at least five years. So you know, the longer things are out, the more they get used up. So if you want that perfect phone number, it might not be available, but it doesn't hurt to look for it. Mine just kind of auto gave me one. Like yeah. Yeah, it'll definitely auto auto give it to you. But I no, wanted to pick one. You can also like scroll through the list and do one. <laughs> yeah. I ended up choosing one that, that uh, was memorable for me and, and all of that. And lastly, website. It'd be great if you can have victorsbakery.com, but probably that was taken a while ago. But it's not imperative like it used to be, because my keywords might have been bakery in San Diego. And I really wanted victorsbakerysandiego.com. Actually, what I really wanted was bakerysandiego.com. No, what I really wanted was bakery.com. Taken. Bakery San Diego. Taken. Victor's Bakery. Taken. Well, that's the thing. You don't need those keywords, even the long tail keywords, in your website address anymore. Because what the heck, before you heard about it, what's a Facebook? What's a Twitter? What's a Flickr? What's a Yelp? What's a dribble? What's all of these websites that don't that are not real, that don't make sense? But they have all of this traffic and users and fame. Adobe, the biggest name in, in web and graphics, is a mud brick. Mm -hmm. But they've got Photoshop, <laughs> they've got Illustrator, Dreamweaver, Business Catalyst, Phone Gap, etc. etc. What's in a name? Anything else by a row smells like whatever quote that is. Um, you don't need to have literally an, uh, a name about your keywords. And like I'm saying, I would like, let's say I did manage to get, Vic, I did see that victorsbakery.com is available. It's not going to be free. You're going to need to pay a little bit to get your piece of the internet. And we'll talk in more detail later, but it's anywhere between $20 and $120 a year. There's a huge range. Average is a little bit more from like $50 to $80 a year to get your piece of the internet. In the grand scheme of it all, not so expensive. You're probably paying much more for that from cable every month. Another alternative is to get a free website. For example, victorsbakery.wordpress.com. I can go get that website right now for free. The catch is that I have their name on top of my site. It might not really matter. And you said webs? Well, you, can you do like a domain forwarding? I mean, you, you can. The name and just forward. Yeah, a little bit more advanced. You can do no, domain forwarding, definitely. Um, Website, I have one. Webs. Webs.com. Webs okay, that's another one to look into. I haven't quite heard. Webs.com, it's reputable and useful. Yeah, it's free. So. Okay, webs.com. Um, there's plenty of places to get a free website. They really range in, in value. 
results and speed and all of that stuff. Later on we'll talk about some recommendations of web service providers and such, but that'll be later. And then your social media. If you've got social media, write those down, the address and such, or if you'd like to eventually... I've been hearing about the Snapchat thing. All the kids are on it. Do I need to get on it? Short answer, yes. Long answer, yes. Depending on your company. But um, just like any social media, two sides of the coin. The frivolous, fun part, the serious business part. And they're both valid. You can use Twitter for fun and, and, and frolic and all of that, and business. You can use Snapchat for fun and frolic and business. Companies are doing that. They're taking advantage of all of the social media because lots of people use them, hundreds of millions of people. It's a way to market. So that then, you've got some things to think about. You can write this stuff down and I'll look at it and give opinions and such. The more you can define this, the better, because that'll further go into other concepts that we'll be talking about as the course goes on. Any general questions on this? Yeah. Um, I was advised uh, to either get the .com or get the .biz. I stay away from .cc or .net. I think a lot of times I go, go down and try to say, well, check that, we'll give me the .net as well. .nets are just, to me, they're just unused. People are using them. This is the catch-22 of things. Everyone wants a .com. There's less and less and less dot coms. Um, there's dot nets, dot orgs, dot bizzes, dot ccs, dot us, etc., dot tv, dot ws. There's even some new weird ones, such as dot aero, if you're an airline, I guess, dot uh, condo, if you're some sort of condo association, dot guru, dot ninja, mm -hmm. dot xyz. There's so many of these new ones out there. Dot lawyer, dot triple X. There's lots of them out there nowadays. That means there's a lot more opportunity for me to get Victor's Bakery dot Guru. But people are gonna for a long time gonna go, okay, Victor's Bakery dot com, right? No, that's the other company. So if you get some of these other names, that's fine because you're still going to engage in SEO, you're still going to engage in SEM and build a name for yourself as that dot guru instead of that dot com. So it used to be that having the dot com was the gold standard of it all. It's still important and valuable because after 26 years of the web, we're used to dot com. Um, the next three, five, ten years, who knows, people are going to say, okay, you've got your dot biz, your dot cc, your dot guru, your dot lawyer whatever and it's not gonna really matter what it's dot whatever because you're gonna create a presence on LinkedIn and Twitter and Yelp and Kudzu and your newsletter and everything. Have you been um like the like the you go for the dot com and then if hey you can get dot net dot info dot org and all these other ones no one else gets them not pay for that too. That's true. Um, getting your other dots is could be useful, especially if you're one of these big names. Obviously, Apple has to buy every dot com and dot everything, or then some parody site is going to take it over. And Microsoft and all of these companies have to buy all the names. For us little guys, probably not. My first uh, website, uh, which is still around, vmcinc.net. I've got to update it. But vmcinc.net. Um, when I started off with all of this stuff at the beginning of the 21st century, I wanted to get the dot com, but it was $20. And I was a struggling student. And this one was only $12. So I got the $12 one. I've then used it for years. And then as I got more established and paid better and such, okay, I'm going to go back and buy the dot com. Someone else had taken it. And they wanted to sell it to me for only $500. Uh, yeah. Now, probably like $1,000. It could be pretty expensive. But really the thing is, who cares? I've built this presence online on .net and on Twitter and on Yelp, etc., etc., and it doesn't matter that the other one exists. And people are still probably going to type directly vmcinc.com. doesn't matter. People are probably much more often going to be searching for something on the search engines, and my content will appear because the other one is just a spammer. And because they're a spammer, they're not going to get good placement on the search engine results. Just for fun, let's see what's on it at the moment. Classic spam site. Best offer. This domain is for sale. <laughs> so.
so. So basically, because we're using the dot com or whatever in everything, you wouldn't really worry about buying on the If it's in your budget, it might be useful because you don't know if one day you'll go you'll you'll be famous go viral whatever and someone claims the dot whatever that you didn't and makes some sort of site to kind of piggyback on your fame it's hard to say if it's in your budget it might be useful simply to keep out the cyber squatters but as a beginner perhaps and it's not in my budget buy whatever works and then build it as a presence and then maybe as you get more profitable then invest in the others Yes. Just real quick, I want to throw out on that. Is, is, are you ever going to do anything about cyber squatters? Because I've gone to these sites where they have the dot com theory yards for the pure They who? And they're huge. They who? Uh, like the government. I, I know. Huh? Which government? Yeah, well, <laughs> that's <laughs> the thing. Not to be glib. That's the thing. The internet, the web, is a global thing. Yeah. Our jurisdiction ends, you know, a mile off of our shores. So, I, I don't know. It depends on where the squad is. I have, yeah, and I have no idea. I have no idea if it'll get fixed. Probably. I don't know when, but for the moment, we, we live with what we have, which is that someone can buy this domain name and hold on to it for 10 years and never do anything with it, and I want it. Well, I'll settle for the .NET and build a presence on there. So, well, there's see, no much to do. I've lost my share of domain names, and what I've learned is that there's, there's software that can buy a domain as soon as it expires, mm -hmm. like five seconds after. Yeah. That is, that is partly also up to the companies that sell the domain name. Because honestly, their business is to sell domain names. They pretty much don't have to care who they sell it to. As long as, what's that? Sometimes there's software that is used to buy a domain like right away as soon as it becomes available. And the companies that sell these names don't have much recourse against that, unfortunately. So we'll see. we're getting a flood warning, so if your phone goes off, Sorry about that. No, no, no. I got one too. But it's uh, it's happening. So, um, what's that? It's uh, that's a black hat technique. So. We can look that up during the break and such. We can look that up. That's that should be public knowledge to some degree. So we can look. It that is up. as long as we. To some degree, yes. Yeah, it was up on the 31st, but it's still there, so I'm like, oh, no, I have no idea where to tell us what we can look at that uh, during, during the break. <laughs> All right, so I'm going to segue out of this for one more handout. I'm going to close that. I'm going to give you one more handout. If you go back to the network folder, I've added a brand new document there, Campos SEO 1 Long Tail Strategy. Drag that over to your desktop or flash drive. I'll turn the printer on a little bit later. I get a copy of that from the network. Remember, you want to drag it out of our network folder because if too many people are trying to access it at once, it might be slow or they might not be able to get it. You can drag it over. Plus, you, you cannot, as students, make any changes there. Sometimes people start to write on their document and they didn't save it on their own drive, and then it doesn't let you because it's locked on the network. Let's look at this activity here. This is another aspect that my company would do for a potential client. This is, a fancy term would be competitor analysis. This is scoping out the competition. This is to see the other web designers, the other restaurants, the other realtors, the other roofers. Um, we are going to see that or we're going to ask, what does your brand offer? Nowadays, search engines don't rank your site very well unless you have good content. It's not just about simple keywords anymore. You're not going to be found when people search for Italian restaurants. You will have a better chance of being found by authentic Italian food in Chula Vista. Specific, just like I would ask my phone. 
just like we're getting better at asking the search engine. So it's about the long tail of keywords. If you understand your niche better, you'll be able to potentially rank better. In this activity, you'll define your long tail. Notice I have some hedge words here. I have, you have a better chance of, and I have also potentially rank better. Because I can't and I don't, as a company, guarantee that you're going to rank well, even when you hire us for $1,000, 5000 whatever. We cannot guarantee this because there's so many factors. So if you're going to hire an SEO company to do this, or if you've hired one in the past, and they guarantee you some results in some time period, run away. Even if the time period is a year. Because there's so many factors. So we have benchmarks, and we have goals, and we check in on things every month or three months or weeks or whatever, but we don't say, you're going to be on page one in a month three months, 12 months. We don't say that. We can't say that. As we saw, there were a billion web designers. There were two billion on Bing, one billion on, one and a half billion on Google. Even when I narrowed it, narrowed it down specifically, I still had like 200,000 results. There's a lot of noise in these results. It doesn't mean 200,000 Mexican restaurants. It means 200,000 hits of content of Mexican restaurants. Uh, so it could just be... Picture that Pictures, Yelp reviews, twi uh, tweets, yeah. all of that. So the hedge words here are important because we tell a client in the beginning, we're going to do all of these things as per our contract and our abilities and our portfolio shows. We're going to do all of these things, and of course we're going to try to make you appear because your company succeeds, our company succeeds. But these are the possible detriments to that. If you know anything about investing, when a, when a company is in the stock market, they have to reveal to their investors all the pitfalls that could derail the company. GoPro went public, those cool little cameras, and on their investment prospectus they say, we have competition from Kodak, and we have competition from Polaroid, we could have competition from Google that could affect our stock price. So all of these factors that could be a detriment to you. That's why we say potentially a better chance of. And when it happens, great. When it doesn't happen soon, we keep trying other tactics, change tactics. We engage perhaps in a little bit of PPC, a little bit of paid, to get the ball rolling, to get the momentum. So it's not a dirty word, the pay-per-click. We do do that. It is valuable, especially when you're starting from zero. Brand new website, no traffic, no hits, no one knows you exist, pay $10 pay a hundred dollars, whatever your budget is, and that'll get you up a little bit for some time, and there will be an echo of that, that it keeps helping you, but then as you get more traffic and activity, start the Twitter, start blogging, start doing that stuff, and then you'll get some of that momentum of what you paid for, and as you do it in the long term, you won't need to pay for anything, and you'll be on page one. For some people it'll be quick, for some people it won't, but it really varies. And so there are two activities here that we'll look at briefly, but then you should look at this on your own. And it's not a complex activity, it's competitor analysis. All you really have to do is search on as many search engines as you want. Obviously, I'm recommending Google and Bing. You're going to do searches. Go to a search engine, plug in a simple keyword from your niche or topic, web design. You're going to look at the first page of results, and you're going to take notes. I'm going to write down. Let's kind of get started on this to see what I'm talking about. I'm going to go to Word. I've got Word on this computer. Open up, go to the Start menu, type Word to get Microsoft Word or Pages. Word, I'm just, or, or just notes on paper. That's fine. And this is, of course, optional, but we do this for real clients and it's very valuable. I've got a Word document, blank document, and here I'm going to take notes. My keyword, web design. I'm going to do Google results. So I'm kind of going through it quickly, but conceptually it should, be, it should make sense. I'm going to go over to Google. 
I'm going to do the search again of web design and then I'm going to take notes on as many as I want, let's say three, real organic results. I'm not going to analyze this, these competitors here that got top placement from an ad. I might not do it for these that are in the map because they have Yelp behind them. I could, but I'm going to go down to the ones here that seem to be organic, the BOP design. What I'm going to do is I can select this listing here and copy that and then paste it into Word. What I like about Word is that you can do the right click and select keep only. If you just do control V to paste, you get all of the color and the and the gibberish and the big size and all of that. But if you do right click, keep text only, it gives you only the text. So you can focus on the words, not the color and the link and all of that. I'm gonna paste that. And then I'm actually going to click on their result. Yes, I'm going to help them by clicking on them, but this is competitor analysis. I'm going to look. What's the competition doing? What are they doing on that side of the street? I go to their website, and I might not have any education in web design, and that's fine. You are going to make objective and subjective comments about the website. What do you like about it? What don't you like about it? What's a good idea that they did that you didn't do? There's a reason that they're number one on the results, isn't it? Taking a quick look here. Website design and B2B internet marketing agency for San Diego, Orange County, LA, and all of North America. Okay, well they've got that tagline right there. My website doesn't have a tagline. Not literally that it's right here, but just that does my website have my tagline somewhere? And because I'm trying to target people in a locality, do I mention that locality? Victor's, web, uh, Victor's Bakery Gluten-free website, uh, gluten-free bakery in Eastlake, California. That could be a perfectly fine slogan. Gluten-free website, uh, uh, bakery specializing in gluten-free goodies in Eastlake. There's my tagline. There's my slogan. It has a keyword in there. It has a location. It explains what Victor's Bakery is. Bop Design. Uh, do they design websites? Do they design graphic design items? Do they design clothing? There's lots of definitions for design. But with their slogan, it's obvious now. I might not know what B2B internet marketing is, but as I see it more and more on other sites, I need to educate myself what is that. B2B internet marketing, you can search it. I see a phone number right at the top. For San Diego and TF. I don't know what that is. TF. San Diego. So phone numbers. Get in contact with us quickly. Or connect with us on LinkedIn, Twitter, Facebook. What's this one? Pinterest. What's this one? Yelp. This one. YouTube. What's this one? RSS. RSS. I'm surprised you guys know it. That one's not so common anymore, but actually they're using it in terms of also find us here, apparently. There's also over on, <coughs> on our RSS and AOL Reader. Yes? What, what, how did it become obsolete? RSS. Uh, even Google themselves yeah. dropped their app. Yeah, so it happened at some point, maybe two years ago yeah. or so. RSS really isn't the hot thing anymore. Okay. Um, it's kind of automatic now if you use WordPress. Oh, so. Yeah. So I've got here a big graphic that catches the attention. You guys right here in the corner, a little quieter, please. Um, I've got this big graphic that catches your attention about what we do. Here's the why. Amplifying your brand's voice. And it goes on. The slider. Finding your niche in social. So they seem to do it all. No wonder they're number one. Clients find us and stay with us. Okay. You've got these other links, our services. Notice these keywords here for more information. Blog, published yesterday. We will see then, again and again, the importance of a blog because you might have designed your website a year ago, so did your competitor, but you have been blogging once a month. Guess who's going to get higher results, perhaps? 
you because you've, got, you've been updating your site once a month. You've been blogging, you've been adding new content once a month. And your competitor hasn't. You both created it a year ago, but you're keeping it up to date. These guys here literally, every few days, something new. The blogging class, we talk much more in detail. What to blog, why to blog, how to blog, all of that. But the idea is you need blogging. Uh, just so in my word document <clears throat> I'm gonna be making whatever these notes come to mind slogan prominent social media lots of social media clean colors clean design Whatever strikes you, positive or negative, you're going to have to swallow your pride and say something nice about the competition because you're going to look at what did they do right. Because then, when you know that, you can do that. Writer. More right. Look at that. Address and location. Like a real company. <coughs> like a real company, not like a spammer. <coughs> the industries that they're targeting. Accounting, financial medical. Again, they've discovered an audience that works for them because obviously I can say everyone will want a website and everyone does, but we're gonna focus on accountants because they have a particular need for a particular website. That's cool. I'm gonna say focuses on industries. And yes, misspellings, don't worry. Uh, so, negative things. Let's see what pops up negatively in my mind or in your mind. Any opinions? Negatives? Um, on his on his slider up above, you kind of don't know what language you're getting into, where to click to find all of them. But then again, it's kind of uh, just introductory. On the gray and yellow slider. Yeah, that is one thing about the slider. You have to be careful if this stuff is zooming by. What's the speed of it? Is it effective what you're saying? Is it obvious what you want them to do? There, there's some read more, but then I'm seeing this out of the corner of my eye moving. Oh, and then I realize this is the slider for me to back up to this. Maybe I didn't realize it. So yeah, all of these things are valid. You can say what's good, what's bad, what you do like, what you don't like. As you see more of these com competitors, that's what the assignment is about, you do this for 3, 5, 10, whatever you want to do, you start to see these trends, you start to see what's working, you start to see what to avoid. Oops, my website does something there where my slideshow goes by too quickly. Or I never put my phone number. And I'm starting to see that that's very important to put on my particular, for my particular niche, for my particular topic. I might not need to put a phone number for certain kinds of businesses because you'll get in contact with me with a contact form that you fill in all of your relevant information, not a simple email, but a contact form <coughs> that guides the questions. I like that they have their social media on the top and the bottom. Um, I can't say when I can't find something at the very top, and then sometimes when you're at the bottom, you want something in there. Yeah. Redundancy is not so bad in websites. Um, the more you let people do something easily, the better. So what I've got here at the what they've got here at the top is social media right away, and if I ended up being at the bottom of the screen, I've got it there too, right next to their email newsletter. Here's a tip here: newsletters. They could be valuable. Yet, yes, yet another thing to do and worry about and manage and all of that. Yes. But it could be another form, forum, another another way for people to refer you, word of mouth, keep up to date with what your clients are looking for. But the, the downfall always of subscribe to my newsletter is that you, you people usually don't sell it. They have a button that says subscribe. Subscribe to what? Why? Who cares? They say here, sign up for the for the Bebop newsletter. Free marketing tips. Keyword free. So how can you convince people to sign up? WordPress lets you create this sign up thing with the click of a button. But to get that button click, that's the hard part. So something of more of a call to action, 
a CTA, that's a keyword, a buzzword you hear all the time, CTA, call to action. How can you call someone to create, to do an action? The action is sign up for the newsletter. How can you call to them to do that? Well, you're going to get free marketing tips. I've got this bakery, let's say, and I want people to sign up for my newsletter because the purpose of a newsletter to tell you the big secret is to capture people's, willingly, to capture people's emails. Not to go buy a list of 10,000 email addresses, like a spammer, but to entice people to willingly give you their email address so that you can judiciously, and not like a spammer, email them once in a while with, here's a sale, 10% off, come to our meetup, donate now, we need you more now than ever, to convince them to give you their email, to market to them. But what's in it for them? Free tips. You know, give them free stuff. Exclusive content. And that's a whole other can of worms, but it is a valuable thing. Yes? And that's the only content you actually own. Like the only official audience would say that in marketing. Like hmm. Twitter technically, or Facebook probably charge you now to hmm. reach your audience and things like that. That's a good point. Um, this is the one where you willingly, under your terms, asked for a contact. Technically, when we're on Twitter and Facebook and all the social media, those platforms own that content to some degree and the connections. So that's a good point. Here's really the way perhaps to be the most direct. But Facebook's got that whole infrastructure behind it and Twitter and LinkedIn that is also valuable. Yes? Does it matter, I think like this, this site is going to be sponsored by the site. Uh, does that matter in SEO if it is or is it? Great question, and, and it is. If you don't know what we're saying, Responsive is a website that responds, that changes depending on the size of the screen. If I've got a nice wide screen like that, it looks really nice. But does it also look nice on this little screen? And with more and more traffic coming on these screens, if your site doesn't look good on this screen, the search engines now used to, well, they used to say, if you're responsive, if you look good on mobile, that's cool. Now they say, if you don't look good on mobile, that's bad. So if your website does not respond, if your website does not shrink to the right size monitor, and you can do a quick test by simply shrinking your web browser, if it shrinks and it kind of rearranges itself to still be readable, it's probably responsive. Better way to check it, of course, is on a mobile. How many times have you visited a website, you go to the website, all the text is tiny. You have to zoom in to view it. That's probably an indicator that it's not responsive. The search engines now are saying not only is that annoying for the users, that's going to hurt your SEO. So if your website is not responsive, that's one of the big things that's going to handicap you from getting good SEO. And there's WordPress templates allow, are there responsive design templates in WordPress? Because okay. WordPress is the biggest web design creation tool. They have a, such a large variety of designs and templates and such and creators. The short, an, short answer is yes. Many times you're going to get right out of the box responsive themes and designs. You still run across many that are not, but it's pretty easy to switch from design to design. One thing that I'm seeing here, that if I go into, if I shrink it down to a pseudo-responsive mode, the graphics look weird. So I might make a note here. Yes. How would not having a responsive site work for this SEO? I'm just curious how Why? Because the search engines make the rules, and if we don't follow the rules, it's just... Yeah, because they're seeing that so much traffic is coming through these. It's not technically responsive, but if you're serving them the appropriate design, which is what, you know, uh, the responsive web design, and then there's um, pro uh, progressive web design or EM, whatever is the best way for them to see it is what you want what they want, what the search engines want. So they're, they're kind of looking for that bootstrap name? Not literally bootstrap because there's so many uh, alternatives to do it that, to do it responsive, just that it's responsive. Um, mind if I see what you type? Yeah. Yes. Uh, I'm writing a negative that um, 
responsive graphics aren't so good. Because I still need to check it on mobile. These graphics are getting blurry and fuzzy and weird once I rearrange the size of the screen. But again, that's just a quick way to test it. Well, the real way is to take out your phone and actually check the site. This activity can take as long as you want, as long as you need. Again, for our client, we, we take like a week to do this because one of the people on my team does this in depth, checks a bunch of websites, writes a bunch of notes, puts it all condensed into a spreadsheet and a document to present to the client to say, here's your competition, here's what we're seeing, here's what we need to do to do it better for you to become the number one in your niche. And that's competitor analysis. I'll mention one more thing and then we'll wrap up because I've got it in two parts. Do basic keyword searches and then do long tail keyword searches. But I have a little note here. In a clean search engine, search for long tail keywords and then do the same thing. Clean means, down here, a web, a web browser that doesn't have the cookies active or that you're in private mode and such. Because the search engines, uh, the web browsers, Firefox, Internet Explorer, Safari, all of these, they're a tool for you to browse a website, many websites. And you often visit many websites over and over, your bank or Facebook or whatever. And so the, the web browsers are trying to help you to do the things that you do all the time. So if you're all the time doing this keyword searchings of web designers in San Diego, it's going to start to show you with blinders the same things over and over. And so you need to reset your web browser, clear the cookies, clear the cache, go into private mode. You need to be as, 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 as tabula rasa as possible, as blank as possible when you search because that's what your potential clients are doing. They don't have your internet history. They're searching with their own computer, their internet history, and one day they decided to search for what's an affordable web designer in Chula Vista for my dog walking business. And you've been searching that over and over and you appear number one. But when they search it, you appear 99. Because that search engine doesn't have that history, the web browser doesn't have that history on their computer that is on your computer. Every web browser is a little different, and I'm not really going to show it how, to, how, you, how you do it here, but you're going to need to clear your cookies, reset the cache, or go into private mode to be as, as a blank slate as possible. What I note here is, what if your main web browser is Firefox, and every time you go to your bank, you automatically log in. That's useful. But if I'm asking you to clear out the cookies and everything, all your passwords are going to get deleted. What I'm saying then is get a different web browser. Get Chrome or Internet Explorer or Safari or Opera. Use a different web browser and on that one clean it out every time you're going to do this so that none of your passwords go away. These, web, these browsers are free. Your computer comes built in with one. Go download another one and use it for this research. Because as you do this, this is going to be the first time we do it. We're going to do it again maybe a month from now two months from now. We're going to do this in the long term to see how are we improving on our results page, how's the competition moving around, are their websites increasing and decreasing. That's why this can be another time-consuming thing. That's why we take like a week on it and we update it as time goes on because these positions might change, these trends might change. You're still <coughs> using shiny buttons that have a little sparkle on them. That's so 2012. You need now uh, flat design with those with those subdued drop shadows let's say next year maybe the maybe that uh, shininess comes back again who knows that's why you're gonna look at the competition and you're gonna see trends about look at this there's not a lot of these gradients that there used to be this doesn't have a little drop shadow like it used to it's just a simple bold color and this there's no background picture behind this bar like there used to be there's a very subtle texture back here, not a big in your face picture of San Diego. You know, see what the competition is doing. What's the style? What are the trends? Trends change. You don't want to be so out of the trend unless you're trying to be retro. They look like, um, like they belong to Staples and Office Depot. Yeah. How do you get how do you get that sense? Just the coloring. 
Yeah. The red with That's the white. Yeah. The structure it feels like staple. It's really tacky. Yeah. Great. It looks very staples. Great, we'll write that down. All of these um, ideas that come to your head, great, write them down. If we are not very versed in web design, we don't know that this is using a 16 by 9 grid or whatever, that's okay. You don't need to know the terminology. You just need to know what you like, what you don't like. If you have the experience of web design and such, you can make more commentary so that you know what you need to do. Like, I need to make this jQuery drop-down menu just like they do. What's a jQuery drop-down menu? I don't know, but I want this thing to happen. Because my website doesn't have it. It's just a big long list on the side. So that's that activity. On your own, you're going to try this out. And as you do this, then you're starting to develop. Think about some 10 simple keywords that define your site, and then five complete phrases. That's your long tail. What we'll do with those? What we'll do with those, that's what we will continue to talk about in the class. But this is step zero. Why are you doing all of this? Why are you online? What's the competition? How will we do it better? And then the details coming up next time. A lot to think about, but any general questions? Okay, so we kind of ran over our lab time. Usually we do have the 30 minutes. Next time we probably will, so we'll have a little lab time.